Yes, it might be a mess in there. But we accept it because we know we have left home for a long time. So now we're home. With our in-breath and our out-breath, our mindful breathing, we begin to tidy up our homes. Communicating with the breath. The path home begins with your breath. If you know how to breathe, you can learn how to walk, how to sit, how to eat your meal, and how to work in mindfulness so that you can begin to know yourself. When you breathe in, you come back to yourself. When you breathe out, you release any tension. Once you can communicate with yourself, you'll be able to communicate outwardly with more clarity. The way in is the way out. Mindful breathing is a means of communication, just like a phone. It promotes communication between the mind and the body. It helps us know what we're feeling. We're breathing all the time, but we rarely pay attention to our breath, unless our breathing is uncomfortable or restricted. With mindful breathing, when we breathe in, we know we're breathing in. When we breathe out, we know we're breathing out. When we breathe in, we bring our attention to our in-breath. To remind ourselves to pay attention to our breath, we can say silently, Breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. The air is entering my body. The air is leaving my body. Follow your in-breath and out-breath all the way through. Suppose your in-breath lasts four seconds. During the time of breathing in, allow your attention to rest entirely on your in-breath without interruption. During the time of breathing out, focus entirely on your out-breath. You are with your in-breath and your out-breath. You are not with anything else. You are your in-breath and your out-breath. Breathing in and breathing out is a practice of freedom. When we focus our attention on our breath, we release everything else, including worries or fears about the future, and regrets or sorrows about the past. Focusing on the breath, we notice what we're feeling in the present moment. We can do this throughout the day, enjoying the 24 hours that have been given us to breathe in and out. We can be there for ourselves. It takes only a few seconds to breathe in and set yourself free. We know when others are breathing in and out mindfully. We can see it when we look at them. They look free. If we're overloaded with fear, anger, regret, or anxiety, we're not free. No matter what position we hold in society, or how much money we have. Real freedom only comes when we're able to release our suffering and come home. Freedom is the most precious thing there is. It is the foundation of happiness and it is available to us with each conscious breath. Non-thinking and non-talking. Happiness is possible when you're in communication with yourself. To do this, you have to leave your telephone behind. When you attend a meeting or an event, you turn off your telephone. Why? Because you want to communicate and absorb others' communication. It is the same when communicating with yourself. This kind of communication is not possible with the phone. We're used to thinking a lot and talking a lot. But to communicate with ourselves, we need to practice non-thinking and non-talking. Non-thinking is a very important practice. Of course, thinking and talking can be productive too, especially when our minds and feelings are clear. But a lot of our thinking is caught up in dwelling on the past, trying to control the future, generating misperceptions, and worrying about what others are thinking. A misperception can happen in a moment, in a flash. As soon as we have a perception, we're caught by it. So anything we say or do based on that perception can be dangerous. It's better not to say or do anything. That's why in the Zen tradition, they say the paths of talking and of thinking should be cut off. The path of speech is cut off because if you continue to talk, you continue to be caught in your words. Mindful breathing is a practice of non-thinking and non-talking. Without thinking and talking, there is no obstacle to get in the way of our enjoyment of the present moment. It's enjoyable to breathe in, to breathe out, 
It's enjoyable to sit, to walk, to eat breakfast, to take a shower, to clean the bathroom, to work in the vegetable garden. When we stop talking and thinking, and we listen mindfully to ourselves, one thing we will notice is our greater capacity and opportunities for joy. The other thing that happens when we stop thinking and talking and we begin listening to ourselves is that we notice the suffering present in our lives. There may be tension and pain in our bodies. We may have old pains and fears or new pains and fears, which we have hidden under our talking and texting and thinking. Mindfulness lets us listen to the pain, the sorrow and the fear inside. When we see that some suffering or some pain is coming up, we don't try to run away from it. In fact, we have to go back and take care of it. We're not afraid of being overwhelmed because we know how to breathe and how to walk so as to generate enough energy of mindfulness to recognize and take care of the suffering. If you have enough mindfulness generated by the practice of mindful breathing and walking, you're no longer afraid to be with yourself. If I am free of needing a mobile phone, it's because I carry mindfulness with me, like a guardian angel on my shoulder. The angel is always with me when I practice. It helps me be unafraid of whatever suffering or pain arises. It's much more important to keep your mindfulness with you than to keep your mobile phone. You think that you're safe when carrying your phone. But the truth is that mindfulness will do much more than a phone to protect you to help you suffer less and to improve your communication. Come back. The quiet of non-thinking and non-talking gives us the space to truly listen to ourselves. We don't have to try to get away from our suffering. We don't have to cover up what is unpleasant in us. In fact, we try to be there for ourselves to understand so that we can transform. Please do come back home and listen. If you don't communicate well with yourself, you cannot communicate well with another person. Come back again and again and communicate lovingly with yourself. That is the practice. You have to go back to yourself and listen to the happiness you may have in this moment. Listen to the suffering in your body and in your mind and learn how to embrace it and bring relief. Communicating with the body. As long as we have mindfulness with us, we can breathe mindfully throughout the day as we go about our daily activities. But our mindfulness will be stronger and will get more healing and communicate more successfully if we take the time to pause and sit quietly for a few moments. When a newly freed Nelson Mandela came to France for a visit, a journalist asked him what he would most like to do. He said, sit down and do nothing. Since his release from prison and his official entry into politics, he hadn't had any time to just enjoy sitting. We should make time to sit, even if it's for only a few minutes a day, because sitting is a pleasure. Whenever we're restless and don't know what to do, that is a good time to sit down. It's good to sit when we're peaceful, too, as a way of nurturing a habit and practice of sitting. When we stop and sit, we can begin right away to follow our in-breath and out-breath. Immediately, we can enjoy breathing in and breathing out. And everything gets a little bit better because the present moment becomes available to us. Breathe in a way that gives you pleasure. When you sit and breathe mindfully, your mind and body finally get to communicate and come together. This is a kind of miracle because usually the mind is in one place and the body in another. The mind is caught in the details of your projects to be done today, your sorrow about the past, or your anxiety about the future.